genetic mutations linked to tail loss in humans and primates revealed. Scientists recently used the CRISPR gene editing tool to investigate the genomes of various primates like humans and monkeys, and they managed to pinpoint the genetic changes that led to the loss of tails on our evolutionary journey. Humans have tails in our embryonic state. But as we evolve in utero, our tail bud regresses, and by the time we're born, only the tailbone remains. In lab settings, researchers were able to introduce this into mice. With these identified genetics, they actually stunted and blocked tail growth in these mice, confirming that they had indeed discovered the proper gene sequences. No word on whether they planned to breed an army of tailless mice, designer dogs that people can't cut the tails off of, or maybe just allowing wealthy parents to select a tail as a fashionable upsell at the Build-A-Kid clinic. Do you think we should be using CRISPR on mice in a lab? Let me know in the comments. Archaeologists are using hazelnut shells to peer backward through time. Researchers from Oxford and Lund University in Sweden have used carbon isotope dating from hazelnut shells to reconstruct forest density values for different eras in history. Hazel trees are a deciduous tree from the Northern Hemisphere, and researchers have taken advantage of the fact that carbon isotopes inside hazelnut shells have a direct correlation to forest and leaf density. Basically, the amount of carbon isotopes found in a hazelnut shell goes up or down depending on how much light it's exposed to, and this is even true of different shells from the same tree. Using this correlation, they took these shells from various archaeological sites and they were able to map out how earlier ones showed variations from a range of forest densities and shells tested from later periods like the Iron Age show a trend toward increased forest openness over time. This research gives us valuable insights into forest environments and how they change over time, as well as demonstrating how hazelnuts and carbon isotope levels are a great proxy for tracking changes in woodland density. What are some other areas carbon isotope dating might give us some surprises? Let me know in the comments. Astronomers have found new clues in the baby planet birthing process. An international team of researchers using the super powerful and advanced ALMA array of telescopes down in Chile have mapped out a baby planet called a protoplanetary disk, and they discovered abundant water vapor concentrated in the upper layers of the disk rather than the midplane where the majority of the mass is located. Protoplanetary disks are flat, rotating disks of dense gas and dust that surround young stars and will eventually collect enough mass to form a planet. And being able to actually map the different water vapors and densities gives us valuable insights into the role of water in the planet birthing process. And it's been challenging to observe these disks because they're obscured by the very dust they're made of. And it wasn't until we had advanced technology like the millimeter wave telescopes of the Chilean Alma Ray that we were able to see these disks in such amazing detail. What other astronomical mysteries do you think the Alma Ray might help us solve? Let me know in the comments. It turns out bacteria like a little radio before they let some DNA inside of them. There's a process called bacterial transformation, and it's used to introduce specific genes or sets of DNA into bacterial cells, turning them into tiny protein factories for research in medicines. And they've even been used to change plant genetics for things like higher pest resistance and greater crop yields. The technique for bacterial transformation thus far has used chemicals and heat, and a lot of the bacteria doesn't survive that process. But now, a team led by RMIT University in Australia has ditched the heat and chemicals and turned to high-frequency radio waves to temporarily open the cell wall, allowing the DNA to enter inside and transform it. The team also showed that the radio wave treatment isn't limited to bacteria as it also works in the complex eukaryotic cells found in plants and animals. With a lower cost and higher efficiency, this method is on track to become the industry standard and should lead to many new treatments and medications. What's your take on genetically modifying things? Let me know in the comments.